Hi, everyone. Hi. Yeah, welcome. Um, I am Sarah Kanikio, Director of Admission, and um, we have Kate Orr here, who's going to give you a presentation about the um, architecture and urban design program. But if you have any uh, admissions questions, we do have an admissions session tomorrow at 2 p.m. And I'm going to share the link here if you haven't registered already. But please do uh, join if you can. And of course, you can always email us at arch underscore admissions. I'm going to add that here as well. And I'm going to turn it off, turn it to Kate to start the presentation. All right. Thank you, Sarah. Hi, everybody. Um, thanks for joining this, this online open house session. Um, I'm happy to, um, to welcome you this morning. We had a great in-person session this week as well uh, in New York City. But I wanted to just assure everybody that this is the same information that that all the the, the students who were were able to visit us in person got, and and we want to just make sure you learn about the program, you get all your questions answered, and and we're very very excited to invite you to apply to the urban design program. Um, my name is Kate Orff, and I'm the director of the program. I've been the director of the program for. 10 years, which is a big, fun milestone for me. And, um, and it's just an amazing, uh, it's an amazing one year program. So um, as we move through, and I'm assuming many of you um, have found our online link, which is at the bottom of the screen, um, you can also um, find some of the student work. I personally am not on social media, but we have this great group of students who help um, on um, some of our social media and some of the, the student work is, is shared on the channels that you see below. And in addition to, to, to this, um, I'm available to answer questions on email as is Sarah in the admissions office if you're too shy to ask a question here in this, in this session. Um, the purpose of today is really to uh, describe the, the, the program to you. I'll take about 20 to 25 minutes to, to do that. And then um, we can just open it up for, for Q&A. And um, I can also, um, if you have additional questions, connect you with a current student um, moving forward uh, or uh, to have a Zoom with them if you if you have questions about the student, student life or the student experience, which is really quite intense. So again, welcome and, 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 and we're happy to have you. Um, first of all, I wanted to start with this kind of notion that when you are accepted and you become part of the urban design program, you're part of this very, you know, intensive cohort of students. It is very different from a traditional architecture program where you might just be like part of a big mass of people and you then kind of pick your own studios and you have, you know, one studio with this person, one studio with this person. We really kind of work as a community. We are a community of, of 50 to 60 students. And you have a very kind of, you know, close relationship with the students and with the faculty members because you're with them um, uh, throughout the three semesters. So it's a great way to experience Columbia University at large, which I'm showing here. This is an image of Low Library. And I show this because Avery, our building is right here where my my mouth my mouse is. You're really kind of in the center of Columbia University. You're really, and 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 as a Columbia student, of course, you're able to take advantage of the huge offerings of the university from, you know, uh, you know, coursework. Some I had a student take French conversational French last year to you know the symposia concerts, you know, global leadership forums and, and everything that, that sort of happens at, a, at the university scale. So it's a really just very intensive learning experience that is very appropriate for students who are curious and who have um, a, um, an independent drive to, to learn and to be part of a larger university. And it's also great for you because you really have a built-in community day one. 
Um, so um, that is part of, of, of the, the magic of the program. So um, I showed you Low Library, which is really the, the center of the larger community at Columbia. And this is Avery Hall, and then the sort of cluster of buildings in Avery Hall and um, in the immediate environs, fair weather, uh, and so on, really form the, the heart of the Graduate School of Architecture, Planning, and Preservation. And Columbia MSAUD, the Urban Design Program, is, you know, um, alongside our you know, partner programs in urban planning and real estate and, and others really kind of focusing on, on the urban questions within the school. Um, but of course, the school also has preservation, um, 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 computational design, and um, um, curatorial kind of practices programs. So of course, the majority of your coursework would be in urban design, but your electives would also begin be, be able to kind of span into these other programs within GSAP and or outside of the university. Um, and so um, this is our, our program office is, is here on the fourth floor. The fourth floor of Avery Hall is kind of the administrative hub of the program and 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 of the, the, the of GSAP. It used to be all, the entire building used to be a library. Um, and that uh, library, uh, the, the world-renowned Avery Library is now on the ground floor in the basement. Um, but um, it is, you know, if you are a researcher or if you're interested in archival research, Avery Library is really second to none. So now I'll tell you just a little bit more about the pedagogy of the, the program. Um, we are a, a unique program that looks at urban design as, as in, in this like wider framework of the territory and the processes and urban systems that comprise the city. Um, and we aim to engage the complex processes of global urbanization and the emerging stresses and, and very present stresses uh, of the climate crisis. I personally have a joint appointment with the um, School of Architecture and the Climate School and am teaching um, joint seminars and studios. So you would, if, um, if this is of interest to you, you would be taking um, a studio alongside a climate policy student or a seminar alongside a climate policy student. If that is your interest, of course, you have options to do other kind of emphases as well. Um, so we are, um, you know, our premise is that ways of living in cities and landscapes um, is becoming increasingly untenable and requires new forms of research and attention. And so what is the agency of design and these shifting conditions? And what do you need to, to really know to be able to be um, an, uh, someone who can kind of influence positive outcomes? Um, and so we uh, frame the city in, through um, seminars, through history and theory, uh, through, you know, um, bringing you up to speed on software and modes of communication and exploration, um, the city not as a fixed delineated space, but also a gradient of, of sort of inhabited landscapes and territories supported by networks of energy resources, capital, and, and, and of course, inequality. And so our studios um, over a three semester sequence address near and long-term threats to ecosystems and position design as an inclusive activist tools-based project for specific sites and communities. And of course, as a critical project examining urban forum process and knowledge. So I would say as a graduate of our program, you are of course, you know, equipped not only to, you know, function as an urban designer in this larger cultural context, but you will learn systems thinking, you will be able to absorb and communicate complexity. Uh, you will understand you know, engagement and how urban design greatly differs from you know, professions or, or, or disciplines like architecture uh, that um, are you know, less about civic engagement. Um, we practice design really as this kind of co-creative aspect You'll know and learn how to be an active collaborator, which will serve you very well. Um, you'll learn storytelling, narrative building, and visualization. You'll um, be grounded in history, theory, seminars that um, embed um, an ethos of social justice and, and a humanitarian um, perspective. 
and uh, you'll be able to bridge sort of like formal three-dimensional change in the built environment with the sort of socio-technical aspect. And then importantly in the in the program, and I'm trained as both an urban designer and a landscape architect, um, and your um, studio professors also kind of span uh, arts, architecture, um, landscape, um, ecosystems, et cetera. We really take on uh, the world as um, really an urban nature continuum. So you'll be not kind of segregated into this person's doing a park and this person's doing a, you know, a sort of a downtown. It's really looking at the, the world as this urban nature continuum. So the way that the program is structured, it's um, incredibly clear and compelling. It is a three semester program. And importantly for everyone to note on this, on this call, it runs from basically June 1st to June to June is a one year calendar program. And so we have students come in the summer. Um, so you would be starting in the summer of 2025. Um, uh, arriving in New York in late May or June. And then we have a three semester program that is grounded in two forms of pedagogy. One is the studio, which is a nine credit course. And then the other is a seminar, which is a three credit course. This is just an example of um, a studio <laughs> that um, was in this case, or just an analysis of of um, you know urban systems of Chattanooga, Tennessee, and waste, and etc., and an overlay of urban systems. So we do um, the the program accept, you know and actively welcomes and accepts students who have a range of different backgrounds from professional degrees in architecture or landscape architecture or planning, uh, etc. And we are also very very open and welcoming of students who have different backgrounds, for example, urban studies or economics, or, you know, if you if you did a, an undergraduate degree and then realized that you're interested in urban design and, and being active in urban resilience or this, this sort of space, then the program is also very welcoming of you because we, we also learn inside the classroom, as you just saw, and then we learn outside of the classroom. This is actually an image from um, one of my seminars where I took uh, students, you know, um, all the way around the, the perimeter of, um, uh, if you will, of, of lower Manhattan and to understand um, with the designers uh, what kind of longer term, um, you know, um, coastal protection measures were planned for lower Manhattan, how they fit into the existing urban fabric, et cetera. So we also learn very much outside the classroom in New York, in the larger region, um, and of course, we also learn inside um, Avery Hall. This is a photograph of an end of year exhibition that we put on in um, Ware Lounge in Avery Hall. So parents of students and so on could, uh, and our recent graduates could celebrate the work. So I'll just go through the pedagogical goals and program structure quickly. I mentioned that, that it's anchored by these just two forms of learning studios, which is more kind of a propositional form of learning that in, engages, you know, um, group uh, of faculty and students work in groups to understand kind of a, a shared problematic and seminars, which are much smaller classes. And they range from say 10 to 25 people that go in a deeper dive in a more of a discussion and reading format um, in, in very specific topics. And I'm going to go through these in detail, but again, the studio sequence is really um, very, very sort of um, makes, makes a lot of sense. Um, and it also has been copied by many other programs. So this, our first studio is really based in New York City and learning about the, how the form of urban design um, in New York has evolved. And we have teachers, Professor Sagi Golan, who is a uh, the director of Manhattan planning at, at the Office of City Planning here in New York City, and Nans Moran, who is just an amazing designer and top graduate of the program from about 10 years, 15, 11 years ago. And so, you know, you really have this balance of policy, on the ground knowledge and design and propositional thinking. The second studio focuses on an urbanized region in the United States, um, 
in past, we've studied um, the upper and mid Hudson Valley in New York City. We've studied Atlanta for a series of three to four years. And now we are in the midst of a, stu a set, a studio, which is happening right now, led by Thad Pulowski and Lee Altman, among others, uh, on a cluster of post-industrial cities and towns in Appalachia. Uh, in um, Western Pennsylvania, West Virginia. And if you're watching the, the news at all in the United States, you know that these cities and towns are, is, are absolutely, you know, on the razor's edge of a kind of a political conversation in the United States. And a lot of that is centered around, you know, this particular studio, which has a, a companion seminar with um, the uh, real estate program around um, um, community-based investing and, you um, housing. Um, you know that this this is just an incredible seminar to be held right now. And then in the final semester, um, which is uh, January through uh, May, we study more at a global scale. And that semester is led by me with Professor Emmanuel Admasu. Okay, so I'll do a little bit more on the first studio. So when you arrive in New York City in uh, late May, early June, you have essentially a kind of a two week period where everyone just gets up to speed on um, software. We do a very detailed survey. We work with each student individually to understand where they are, you know, what their knowledge gaps are, what they want to learn, what their software experiences, et cetera. And we kind of cluster you into, you know, groups based on your, um, you know, your, your experience. So if you're very advanced in software, you'll get very, very people who will push you. And if you're just learning, you will get people who are really just there to, to teach you and to bring you up to, to speed on just the basics that you need to be able to communicate, um, system, systemic, um, urban and, 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 and ideas. So this first studio, the Five Borough Studio, is really focused in the New York area with sites, systems, and neighborhoods and stories as its core. Um, we take you out um, into the region. We study. We, um, you know, find, um, you know, our uh, often with um, community collaborators and folks. You can see um, this is a group of students. You can see the map of New York City in front of them, um, where they were working on this landscape, Jamaica Bay here. Um, and um, uh, so it's very collaborative and, and a kind of very intensive, you know, immersive um, experience in New York City. Um, we also teach our students, um, this is Donovan on the left, um, how to engage with people. And this is a hallmark of the urban design program, which is that, um, you know, urbanism is other people as well as the physical expression of city form. And so we also teach people how to research and how to ask questions, um, uh, best practices for interviewing and so on. So it's very practical um, um, experience. And this is for the Reading New York Urbanism course. Um, we take those ideas back into the studio. We work on them. Um, and then I'll just say a little bit more about um, the summer studio, the summer experience, because it is a great experience where you're here in, in Avery Hall with, in Fairweather with um, a cohort from real estate program and, and the advanced architecture students. Um, and your, your, your instructors for the summer are just extraordinary. So you have this group of summer um, studio leaders. You have um, a a, a, a very dedicated um, court, you know, course called DTEC, which is just design and technology, which is a group of faculty whose job it is to just get you comfortable and up to speed with, with software and get two feet on the ground and, and get everybody settled in. You have um, a course called Reading New York Urbanism that is led by the Pulitzer Prize winning author, Justin Davidson. And he's written a number of books about New York City and its neighborhoods. So it's an incredible opportunity to, to, to learn from him. And then you also have a history and theory course, which is led by Noah Chasen, who has been teaching that course for about 20 years. And he's just an extraordinary educator. Um, and so you will feel after that summer, that intensive period, very, very grounded um, and um, armed with um, everything that you need to, to succeed as an urban designer. 
Then we move in the fall to the second studio, which is really, again, focused on this regional change. And this semester, we're hosting what's called a city change lab. And the focus is on regional cooperation, politics, infrastructure, investment, transportation, and housing. Um, and this fall, and if you're, you're interested in attending or listening into one of the student um, um, presentations, we can potentially arrange that if they're on Zoom. This fall, um, our faculty took and the students went on a week-long trip to Western Pennsylvania and to uh, West Virginia. And uh, many students went to this city, which is Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Um, and in the 1890s, this city was largely wiped out by a flood. And this was not um, purely a nature-driven event. This was a man-made failure of an upstream dam that was not maintained. Uh, and so the city really flooded out. And by the 1890s, this very vibrant community had what you can see just many, many holes in it. And then it sort of lost its relationship to the river, which was a source of industrial growth and then became a source of fear. And that city has struggled moving forward. You can see the sort of former steelworks in the background, now the now canalized river. And then all of those buildings that had been um, destroyed by the flood are just simply replaced with parking lots. So it's really a city that whose downtown is struggling um, and, and that is in great need of urban design. Um, this was a workshop. This is Thad Pulowski here, and this is me. Uh, a workshop we've done um, and over a series of years with seminars and studios in this place. Um, and then the, sem the studio again, just traveled there now and had a major kind of symposium and city change lab um, with uh, Loeb fellows, with um, the mayor, with um, mayors of these clusters of cities um, and with uh, employers in the region and so on to really focus on how to regenerate this kind of Rust Belt con context. We've also in the past, as I mentioned, um, uh, traveled to Atlanta, and this was a studio, um, you know, led by Emmanuel Admasu, and you can see the instructors here. Uh, and this was just an incredible um, study and, and students, three year sequence of studios that focused on Atlanta forms of um, co-op housing, uh, ways of uh, trying to develop land trusts um, and forms of living together to sort of combat the privatization of the landscape um, and, um, and, and, and gender forms of housing that are really kind of reaching everybody where they are. Um, and so this was, um, you know, a great uh, a studio. And you can see at the end of my remarks, I'll also um, put some links in the chat because I think one of the best ways for you to learn about the program is actually to just look at the student work because this is the the kind of work that you you might be um, producing at some point or the sorts of topics that you might be investigating. And so finally, um, I all switch to a deeper dive into the third um, signature studio of the <clears throat> urban design program, which is focusing on global cities. Uh, and climate change. And so the issues that you look at here are climate, water, informality, ecosystems, resilience, social capital, among others. And so for the past, um, as I mentioned, 10 years, I've been running this studio, which I've loosely been called, I'm calling the Earth Studio, which is this generative framework for urban studies that foregrounds water, site, context, people, ecosystems, and territory. Um, and this is just a snapshot of some of the places that we have visited um, in the past 10 years from Mozambique to, to India, to Jordan, to Brazil um, and, and places beyond Ethiopia. Um, and of course I put these forward because these were our two COVID studios and we still managed to have an extraordinary kind of educational experience over um, over this period when we were forbidden to travel, we did a large studio called Envisioning the Mississippi as a Living River with working with 10 mayors uh, up and down the Mississippi River in cities and towns on the Mississippi River um, who became kind of clients for our studio. 
And then we also then uh, worked the following year on with Belize and the government of Belize on um, coastal zone management and understanding urban development and urban change on this incredibly precious coastline of coral reefs, mangroves, and so on. And now, of course, we're able to travel again. Um, and this is the kind of experience that you will have. You know, we visit in the spring semester. Um, you have a kinney trip, which is paid for by Columbia. It is of no expense to the student. You receive a stipend that covers your airfare and your lodging. And then we, this is myself here. This is Professor Gita Mehta, and there's Thad Pulowski again. Um, we travel around the world. We engage with community members, stakeholders, mayors, uh, civic leaders, um, you know, people living on the ground with their own sets of challenges and, and opportunities. Um, and we learn from them. Um, we also always collaborate. Uh, this is a photograph from, from Pune. Um, we always collaborate with um, institutions and university partners on the ground. So when you travel, you would be also, um, you know, here's some of our students here, but then here's also students from uh, the university and of course some of the faculty represented. So you develop also a relationship with um, students from our, our partner schools. There's myself and Gita again and all of our great partners. And then you you come back in the spring semester, of course, and we work in the studio in New York to develop um, strategies. Um, and um, and here's just a range of you know images that show this experience. And I've been and I took all of these pictures, so it just gives you a sense of the diversity of experience that uh, you will have, whether that's in a in a an orchard in Kanta, Vietnam, or in an agricultural field in. South Jordan. Um, and then, you know, the students then obviously were doing this kind of shared learning and co, you know, co-learning experience. And then students also then kind of work together with faculty to sort of form um, a, a, a design or, or a physical response to what we've, what we've heard. We publish our work, and this is great for you to know as a, as a graduate of our program, we publish our work online in the form of in the in the form of story maps. So this is just a story map of the Mississippi studio I mentioned, where we have, you know, the the studio premise, um, the sort of design vision, how we developed um, our kind of program for ourselves within the studio, and then your your work is also shown online. So it's great to you can just email it to a prospective employer or to anyone to who to to begin a dialogue about that work. Again, some shots of the of the coastal zone management um, studio with um, the, the head of the coastal zone um, here on Zoom. We have Zoom workshops, and then we also um, have in-person workshops. And so here's a snapshot of that published work called Resilient Belize. Okay, so that was the studio sequence. That's probably a lot of information, but it's just an incredible uh, you know, learning journey that we all do together. Um, the other form of learning, as I mentioned, is um, in urban design seminars and elective seminars. So um, in the fall, in the spring, um, you get to select one of three urban design seminars. Um, and that just brings you into a smaller scale of learning and a different form of learning, right, which is more based on reading, you know, small scale lectures and exchange with your um, you know, with your with your faculty members. So recent seminars you can see here. And what's important about the seminars is it obviously enables you to kind of, you know, very much, obviously you can bring your own personal interests to bear in the studio context, but the seminars also help you kind of sharpen um, and define your own path. You might be interested in human rights and the Anthropocene, and, um, or you might be interested in design and difference, um, looking at, um, you know, racism in, um, uh, in the urban context. You might be interested in the rhetoric of public space um, or um, climate change in cities, there's global street design, you know, so, so housing and social equity in the United States. So there's many, many, many ways for you to kind of sharpen your individual uh, pathway. 
And then of course, electives is an opportunity for further sharpening uh, because these entail work across the entire um, GSAP school, real estate, planning, et cetera. And then it also enables you to look across the university for um, a type of course that may, may interest you. And so some students are very interested in storytelling and take schools and take classes in journalism. Others are more interested in human rights um, and um, uh, et cetera. So here's some examples. Um, some are more interested in software. So data mining the city or information modeling, um, seed bombs, um, conflict urbanism, inclusive cities, um, et cetera. So um, really it's hard to, you know, put all these electives on one screen because um, of course they could be, as I mentioned earlier, like French conversational French too. So it's really just a great example for, for you to be able to um, um, to, to work on these things. And so here's some more examples of um, some of the, the seminars on offerings, public space, rhetorics and practices. This is being offered also again this spring. Difference in design is being offered now, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll um, start to close up here and then um, I'm happy to answer questions. If you put, wanna put questions into the chat, um, I'll be able to see the chat. Um, or if you would like to verbalize your question, that's fine. I just wanted to close with a couple of, of links. Um, if you want to know more or see more work, um, you can see um, every year um, in the past couple of years, we've had an online show. So this is the MS Architecture and Urban Design link. So you can see student work from all three semesters at the end of the year show. And I can put these links in the chat there's just a lot of opportunity to learn um, more about, um, about this. So I, I'll close with this um, uh, quote by, by David Carr, a great writer um, who, um, who wrote, great work emerges in the space between people. And I'll, I just wanted to emphasize that, you know, the urban design program is, is very much a program about, you know, building relationships and building trust uh, and, you know, working with other people to try to envision scenarios of an urban future. Um, um, and successful urban designers aren't, you know, working in a vacuum or by themselves. They're really able to enact um, and choreograph and be part of larger change processes. And um, of course, have strong ideas and visions, but um, know that in order to enact these visions that it's really uh, about sort of mobilizing um, larger initiatives and change and change processes. So that's our, our theory of change. And so we model that in the studio um, and because that is what um, is effective out in the world. So I'm going to um, open up our website and then just stop sharing screen uh, for now. And then um, I'm happy to uh, just sort of walk through the questions in the chat. You can feel free to turn your cameras on or leave them off, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, and I'll begin. Okay, so I see a question in the chat um, and thank you for your attention and thank you for listening. Um, and I see a question that says, question for later, can we choose our seminars or are they allotted? So um, the first, um, I mentioned our, that we have this three semester program. So in the summer, which is when you arrive in New York from points unknown or from wherever you are coming from, your those classes, we actually call the summer one big class because you're basically taking um, the, the pedagogy of the summer. And that's because we really want everybody to all be on the same page and to all be learning the same things. So you all have a kind of a, a solid grounding. However, um, then in the fall, you have a much more flexible schedule. You are able to choose um, in a number of ways. You're able to choose one of the three to four urban design seminars based on your interest. One might be on resilience, one might be on global housing, you know, one might be on an urban design um, engagement practicum, you know, so you're able, or street design. So you're able to choose your seminar in the fall. 
And as I mentioned, you're also able to choose an elective. So you do have um, quite a bit of choice in the fall and in the spring. Um, and so those are not allotted. Those are up to you and you can choose them. Any other questions uh, for by folks in the chat or if you wanna go off a of mute, you can also ask a question. Okay, great. There's a question that says, um, the program is open to both pre-professional and post-professional students. What part of students are pre-professional versus post-professional? Additionally, what part have a background in architecture, urban design? Great. So, um, so it is open to, to a range of students with a range of background. Um, and then I would say just because this in the, it's only in the past um, year or two that we've opened the program to um, both pre and post professional backgrounds that the greater percentage of people have some experience in planning architecture or landscape architecture. Um, but there are students um, and, and actually I would say almost half of the students at the in-person um, session had backgrounds in other fields, like I would say urban studies or um, that that came in. One thing that I, um, and so no one has a background in urban design, <laughs> just because um, that is, you know, the point. Um, I mean, people might be, you know, have had coursework in urban studies, et cetera, but um, um, no one has a background in urban design. So you don't have to worry about like feeling behind or not feeling prepared for the program. Um, and then one thing that I did want to say is that the program is is one calendar year, so um, it um, it in and of itself does not um, um, qualify you for licensure if you are interested in, in in the United States. If you are interested in being fully licensed in other countries, each each country that that provides an architecture um, or landscape architecture or planning license. Um, um, has its own criteria. Um, you would be qualified to sit for the AICP exam, which is the certified planner exam, but not for architecture or landscape architecture. And all countries and states have their own very specific requirements for licensure that require a mixture of academic and um, 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 like, like in, in, in office training. So I would just encourage everybody to um, research that based on where you may be interested in practicing long term and just make sure that you understand that it um, is a um, it in it of itself, since it's a, a one year degree program does not qualify for your licensure. And if you want to be a registered architect and practice as a registered architect, you would need to take the three year MARC program which is also offered by GSAP. But, you know, I just want to make sure everybody is, is very, you know, clear and, and, and understands that um, you would, you need to do more schooling than the one year to, to get that kind of licensure thing. Um, so there's one about um, how many students that do you admit per school year? Hmm, I don't know. Well, we, we basically, um, I try to um, kind of curate a class of about 50 to 60 people. And that's a really, you know, that's a number that is a, a very interesting number. I found that more than that is very difficult to, to manage, especially when I'm coordinating travel, et cetera, for the group. And, and then less than that kind of doesn't have that dynamism. So you know, there are urban design programs um, in the United States that have like eight students or nine students. Columbia is one of the larger programs. And, you know, I think that is one of its greatest strengths because you're really learning from a lot of different people with from all over the world. It's also probably the most global of, of, of all the urban design programs in the United States. Um, so you're learning from people all over the world and, and you're in a cohort where you might get to know, you know, 10 people really well in the summer and then 10 completely different people really well in the fall. And then, you know, by the spring, you, you typically know, know, you know, you know, your, your, your whole class. Um, and 
Okay, so hi, thank you. Group work. Yeah, absolutely. Group work is so the, the portfolio, Nicole asked a question about um, the portfolio and the portfolio is not something that you're going to be like judged on, on like, oh, are your graphics perfect? Is your, is you know, the port, we don't want like generic graphic portfolios. We want portfolios that just show your interest. You know, students include many different kinds of works in their portfolios from like hand sketching to, you know, links of videos that they've made to photography to, you know, so it can be a combination of text and image. Um, and I, you know, it is still, you know, it is, is a program. So if you're interested really in the outcome or of your work being more in like writing and report making, you would probably be more, you know, inclined to go to planning programs, right? Because planning is a little bit more, um, you know, about analysis and report writing and et cetera, et cetera. So urban design does, you know, um, it is still kind of this art of the, the, the visual and the political. So, um, so, you know, it would be important for, um, you know, for some ability to have some sort of form of visual expression, whether that's hand drawing or, or, you know, drawings generated by computer, but of course with AI and everything, you know, everybody can <laughs> make stuff. So, you know, we're really looking for students who are interested and the topic, and and so that that statement of purpose um, in the application is also something that you know I, we read very very closely. So you don't have to worry, um, and, and you can also just say in your statement that I'm making this portfolio, but here's what I want to study, and here's what I'm interested in. So that expression of interest is probably the most important thing. Okay, yes, the program is a STEM program, so. If you are um, not, um, um, uh, it, it, you're not a United States citizen. If you're applying from another country, with that STEM program, comes this three-year visa, which is great, uh, and so it is qualified as a STEM program. Very happy about that. Um, and yes, I have a plan on where the global studio is taking place for the spring. And I do not want to say where it is because I have not announced it to the current studio studio cohort. They will be learning because what I try to do is not distract them from their fall. Um, everyone gets very excited. So I try to not distract them from their fall um, um, pedagogy. Um, but we do have a plan for the spring and it is very exciting. Um, and we're looking at the, the energy transition. And, um, and we have two sites which are kind of uh, very centered on urbanism and fossil fuel extraction and the energy transition. And that's what I will say to that, but stay tuned. How many students are working in internships, assistantships alongside their studies? So, um, so many students, what I tend to encourage, and this is of course up to every student, is that you, you know, I think it's very possible to work within Columbia, like in the library or in the print shop or, um, you know, as a teaching assistant. And we have um, five, we have 10 teaching assistant um, programs. Um, and um, and so, um, you know, I, I, so I recommend that, you know, if you were interested in working that you try to get, you know, a more of like a Columbia based um, internship. I have found that because the program is very intense and when you're here, you really want to focus on learning from your faculty and your, your peers that I don't typically advise that you have um, an internship in a private practice. I remember last year I had a student and I was like, you know, are you okay? You know, you really, you don't seem like you're, you're feeling well and you, you look tired and you know, what's, what's going on. You're not really, you know, here, you know, mentally for, for studio. And he said, Oh, I was up till two o'clock in the morning doing this competition for um, this office that I'm interning in. And I thought, Oh, well, that's too bad because you have all these people here you know, at Columbia who want to engage with you and who will be writing you references and who will be your peers in the future. And so 
in general, um, I think it's very difficult for students to to manage, you know, an internship or a job in private practice where you have like wild, you know, a lot of expectations on your time and then balance that with everything at Columbia. So so that student in turn like didn't meet with his peers or didn't go to like the concert in the symphony hall or something like that. So I generally try to encourage people to, you know, to not take on too much and to just realize that the year goes very fast and that you kind of want to dig in, um, you know, with your you know, with your, with your fellow students and with your faculty. Um, and then graduates from the program go have a, um, do everything. So we, we have graduates go into, you know, more urban design specific um, practices. We have a, a number of practices in the New York region, like Cooper Robertson, Byer Blender Bell, you know, um, one architects, um, WXY, um, we have land collective and, and like a, a lot of, um, you know, firms that have our private practice. Um, students also, we have many of our graduates work at, at city planning as well. Usually one to two per year go to work for the city of New York and city planning. Um, we have students who work uh, ultimately at, um, NGOs and nonprofits, like um, there was a woman, Ban, who, who was in our uh, Varanasi studio, who was at um, UN Habitat right now. Um, some students go on to PhD programs. Um, so it is a range, it is a range. But yes, some students also go back to architecture or landscape architecture or planning firms. Uh, but this particular training obviously kind of gives them a little bit of an edge or a differentiator um, amongst their peers. Um, so let's see, bachelor's a while back and I have a large work experience. Yeah, absolutely. Anything you want to include in your portfolio is fine. And you can just make an, a note and an annotation and just say professional work performed at firm XYZ. And we would love to, to review that. Thank you. Um, so, the two programs of AAD and AUD are similar in some places. Both can provide students to explore their focus. I'm wondering if there are personalities. I mean, in a funny way, I think they're they're similar in the sense that they're both three sequential semesters, but they're very different <laughs> from a content standpoint. Very, very different. Um, this is a question from Michelle. So, um, so in AAD you have your first semester in the in the spring, I mean, sorry, in the summer as well. Um, you have a course called Arguments or something. I, I can't remember exactly what the name is, but we have like one course in which all the students are taking that course. But AAD, immediately you're in an option studio, which is, um, so, you know, at the, the, the cohort is broken down into many, many groups of 15 students per faculty member. And so you're just in this kind of smaller group, just working with the one faculty member on. Uh, um, and in A, I would say AUD, you're like part of a movement. <laughs> you're part of like a larger cohort. And our program is also much more grounded in what I would call like the realities of the world and, and site and context, um, uh, much more um, grounded in sort of, um, you know, uh, the, the sort of politics of the possible, I, I would say, whereas in AAD, you might be like making a building that's a sphere or, you know, there might, it's a little bit more on the sort of um, speculative range based on that individual faculty's um, kind of personal interest. So, um, and then I, 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 I couldn't tell much about the, the, the personalities of the students because I think there's a personality that that is part of a GSAP student, which is just creative and engaged, et cetera. Um, but um, you know, I think if you're coming to the AOD program, you you have to at least want to interact with other people because that's sort of how we're we're set up. Um, and um, and 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 so um, yeah, and then we have a lot of obvious practitioners in in urban design too. You know, people who are working in the world in different forms, um, and who are maybe less theoretical uh, maybe than the 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 
AAD group. Great. Any other final questions before we close? Um, thank you so much. Okay. Inclusive sites means solution possibly in Phillips physical building. Well, I mean, I'll just, you know, you know, talk to Jamie, you know, I'll just give the example of um, you know, the the students who are in um working right now in this cluster of cities in Western Pennsylvania. So um so in in a sense we have you know a groups of students studying these four to five different towns and cities alongside their mayors and alongside um you know business owners and you know folks in um design and planning within the region. And so what we did in that case is, you know, rather than just sort of go and come back, students worked over the course of a week uh, and, and the prior, you know, sort of time in the semester to develop concepts and thoughts and diagrams about how they might, you know, what, what might be a kind of a set of programs or concepts that would be engaging for these sites, uh, for example, Johnstown. And then we are paired we are pairing this with the bipartisan infrastructure bill and an EPA grant. So this, these cities can, and then we had this very, very large convening on, on Saturday um, in mid-October where everybody came together from all the five cities and then shared out what they learned, right? And so um, what we're doing is the student work is obviously incredibly valuable for them as students, but these cities and towns then from this program then have exhibits and concepts and ideas that they can um, then use as submittal for the EPA um, 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 community change grant. So it's a way of, that's what I mean by like a tool, which is a design, which is doesn't just live in your head. It lives, you know, as something that is a tool that's enabling others to make um, a change in their community, apply for a $50 million grant or a $20 million grant, and then, you know, kind of help. So our urban design students are actually, you know, on the ground and, and, and working, you know, alongside um, these communities. So it is, um, it is both very specific it is inclusive in the sense that students are, you know, engaging and, and interviewing people over um, who've had many different experiences. So, um, so yeah, that's um, that's sort of what 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 I think is um, like would be a hallmark of your experience. And yes, in in general, yeah, <laughs> one year is definitely never enough, and um, we've experimented, haha, with. Um, you know, making the 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 course two years, um, but every time um, I be you know begin to interview our alumni about that, then um, you know they say, well, we don't want it to be a burden on students because the tuition then you know is it's it's a one year that you really kind of take a you know take out you know a, a moment in your life, and then you can get back into the the workforce, I suppose, or go to a PhD or, do, you know, whatever, whatever your path is. Um, so one year is not enough. Aha. Uh -huh. And then I always have students come back and tell me like, you know, you're, you know, one of our graduates is the head of NACTO, um, which is this, which is this huge organization that's helping convert streets to, you know, more like pedestrian spaces. Um, her name is Sky Duncan, if you want to um, uh, work with her or talk to her. Um, and uh, she she told me uh, um, a couple years back, she said that there's a five year curve where five years after you graduate, it all like penetrates and, and you understand all the all the lessons from from the from the course um, and from the program kind of sink in. And then the studios are mostly collaborative. I will say the the exception is the summer, just because, you know, um, and with real life stakeholders, like you will be visiting you know, Jamaica Bay, um, as our students did that I showed you with the Guardians of Jamaica Bay or with the Jamaica Bay Rockaway Coalition um, is just a shorter uh, time frame. So, um, you know, so it's harder. Um, and then we also toggle between fall and spring. Um, for example, last year, we took students to East Portland, Jamaica, and we worked with the Alligator Head Foundation and the city, plan, you know, sort of National Planning Authority of Jamaica 
Um, and that was a very, very intensive kind of set of very, very real life problems with stakeholders and impact. Um, and then this year we're toggling it a little bit so that the fall studio is, is very focused on stakeholders and engagement and the spring studio is a little more research-based. But, um, but you know, we do, the spring studio is going to be with two of the Columbia Global Centers and, and a little bit more research focused. So we're nearing the top of the hour. I'm gonna close this out there and just say um, thank you very much. And you can send me um, an email at ko2111 um, if you need any further um, assistance. And I just hope that everybody's interested and we welcome you to apply. Okay, have a great rest of your day, everybody. Bye-bye.